prior to my role here at Tatua, um, I've been milking cows, I've been a dairy farmer for 13 years. We grew two and a half hectares of fodder beet this year. Um, we decided to put that um, right down the back corner of the farm as we weren't sure how it would actually go in the Waikato. We established that crop at the start of October. We put a lot of emphasis on the establishment side of things and that was on, on the recommendation from Seedforce. Uh, we had some great support from Seed Falls through that period. Uh, every week they were on farm helping us and giving us some guidance and monitoring the crop. Without that support then possibly we may not have achieved what we did. Once we got to establishment and we got to canopy cover, basically this, this crop you can walk away from. You can, you can close the gate, wire it up and it will just keep growing. 6th of March we started grazing that crop. We saw an immediate lift in milk production. Uh, from the cows. We ended up doing the same production in April as we did in March, so we dropped that decline through the drought months. For next year we intend on um, starting to graze that crop early, earlier than March, um, just given the fact that we actually struggled to get through that crop at the end of it. We've grown a crop in excess of 45 tonnes uh, in a short space of time. In relation to maize, we, we will normally grow somewhere around 23 tonne of dry matter uh, per hectare. So for us those numbers stack up pretty good. You know we, we have grown this crop for around three cents or just under three cents a kg of dry matter at 12 and a half ME. Even grass would, would typically cost you more than that. It stacks up really really well and, and we see it as a vital part of our operation now. I believe that this fodder crop is going to change the face of dairy farming in New Zealand. Um, I, I, I honestly do believe that there is nothing else better out there and so I'm quite happy to, to, to put my name against it and say that this is a, an unbeatable crop.